Hi, welcome into my studio. Although I'm mostly known for drawing and painting wildlife, I thought I'd do something very different today, a still life of an apple. Okay, so this one's going to be pastel. I've got my pastel matte paper, dark gray. I've got my sketch done on there. The simplest of sketches, basically just a circle reference photo on the left hand side. And I'm squinting at the photos and using various soft pastels, just put in the major colors and shapes that I can see. Concentrating a lot as well on the tones for the lightness and the darkness. Now any good quality soft pastels would be uh, sufficient. And I'm using my new uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos for the most part on this drawing. Now once I've got the major uh, colors and tones blocked in, and then blending it all with my finger, creating a real soft underpainting. Now it's critical that I've used a paper pastel mat here that'll take many layers because I am actually going to go over the top in areas with pencil to uh, detail it up a bit more. Now I could of course have just stuck with the um, soft pastels and detailed that or even left a softer look, but I'm just trying things out on this uh, still life so I thought I'd do some pencils actually on top for the finer details. So that's basically the main uh, shape and colors done. I'm coming back in now, as you can see, using various different types of pastels to try and get more accuracy in there. So the underlayers acted as my map, as I say on most of my videos, and now I can start to refine that map. It's much easier to see the tonal changes the lights and the darks and also the slight color changes that I want as well. Now although I'm trying to be quite accurate with this drawing I've changed things a little bit. I've, I've kept the background a little bit more on the cooler side, the bluer side and on the reference photo it's got a bit of a, a pinky or purpley tinge to it so I wanted that to stay cool and the apple itself to be the warm color in this drawing. So now you can see how I'm adding that accuracy, increasing the highlights in some orange here and there just gently blend in with my finger in places so I don't want it to just be a blended out uh, mass as I'm adding these details as I'm adding the details and blending less and less so I'm using a little piece of uh, glassine paper under my hand stopping major smudges and see I'm just going with a little bit of a lighter color on the background that's going to make the apple look like it's coming forward and separating it tonally from that background a bit more. So now probably 90% of it is done and quite accurate. I've started to use colored pencils. Now I didn't put too thick a layer down as the base and that's how I'm able to actually put pencils on top. If you go way too thick, especially with soft pastels, it's going to be much more difficult to start putting details on top with uh, the colored pastel pencils and you would then have to continue using soft pastels to actually get any chance of uh, detailing on top of them. But as you can see here the details are going on pretty well. I want to make sure that I don't have a crisp outline on the edge. I want to keep it fairly soft and that's going to add to the feeling of roundness of the apple rather than a cut out look to it. So here I'm just adding all the small details, all the small little marks, but I don't want to go too crazy on it. I don't want to detail it too much. The whole uh, drawing or painting, however you'd want to call it, took me one hour and 50 minutes from start to finish. So I think you'll agree that's, that's pretty fast. And I was quite surprised how quickly it came together. Notice as well on the highlight, I kept that uh, pretty much pure white straight away. It's gone a little bit um, messy now, a little bit of color have gone into that white, but I made sure I didn't do all the red underneath because I want that highlight to really stand out when I come in with my pure whites. If I had a color underneath, inevitably it's gonna get some sort of mix in, in there. So the usual pencils that I'm using for this technique, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils, Carbothello Pencils as well, the one you can see 
on the screen then with a coloured shaft on there and sometimes occasionally a Caran d'Ache but it's mainly those two brands. Coming in now with the really bright highlight that's going to start to make the apple look reflective and glossy and then a couple of those little fine dots on the surface as well and then it's a case of smaller and smaller bits of refinement. I'm getting that shadow in. It doesn't really show up that well on screen for some reason. I think it's all to do with the way it's the light is bouncing back into the um, into the camera itself. So in the last couple of minutes, that's when I really do, as I said, all that those tiny little bits of refinement, and I make sure I don't rush at this stage. Generally, before I do the refining stage, I'll get up from my uh, seat at the desk, go and have a drink or something to eat, come back at it really fresh at that stage, so that I can concentrate and I'm interested and excited about getting the finishing touches on there rather than have sat for a couple of hours before it maybe aching maybe getting a bit tired as well so i always try to come to the refining stage really fresh a darker uh, shadow on the bottom that's helping that apple look a bit more three-dimensional just a little bit of refinement on the bottom I'm not going to blend this quite as much as I said I didn't want to go too um, detailed on this it's really more of a study than a finished work but quite happy how it's turned out just increasing the brightness on the highlight when I want something very very punchy that's when I'm going towards my sticks and softer pastels They'll, they'll give you a more punchy uh, white and highlight than you'll get with uh, any of the pencils. So just a few more refining touches. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's only a short one, but I think it's give you a, giving you a nice overview of how I've actually um, drawn this apple. As I said, I'm more well known for wildlife, animals, and if you're interested in those, I've got loads and loads of videos now on my YouTube channel, some really long ones on there as well. So as I finish off using my new pastel stick, that's gonna give me the darkest dark, so you can see I'm just, you know, putting in the lightest lights at the end and the darkest darks. And as I finish off, hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you found some tips on there, and I'll see you all again real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long so you can see they're really really in-depth subjects such as um, turtles birds elephants big cats you name it is on there so that's my patreon channel and also on that patreon channel before i go into something else i've got a secret facebook group so only the members are actually on there it's the most supportive and friendly facebook group that i've ever seen i know i'm biased but it really is We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we've got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.